Today I'm going to look at characters and how we make compelling, engaging, wonderful characters um, when we write fiction. And I think sometimes we, we hear a lot about characters being sympathetic and we're not really sure what that means and we, we must be able to empathise with the character and that's not really helpful either. Um, and it's worth bearing in mind that characters don't really even have to be likeable to be successful. In fact, some of my favourite characters, and I'm sure yours too if you think about it, are very unlikable beings. Dracula, let's pick one, one of my favourite characters of all time, um, could not really be described as, as likeable. Um, but he's compelling. And what is it that makes those characters compelling? What is it that really makes us want to follow their story? Um, and of course, it depends on the type of book you're writing, whether it's genre fiction or something else. It depends what sort of feeling in the book you're trying to evoke um, as to what characters you're going to use. But there are some common elements as to how we create really successful characters. Um, and one of the things that you'll see again and again if you, if you look closely, and, and I warn you, once you start looking at things like this, you'll never enjoy reading as simply again because you'll be dissecting everything and taking everything apart, but that's what writers do. So one of the things you'll find is that every character who is successful wants something. Um, this is true of films and books. They, the, the character has to have something they want. And this can be quite complicated. It can be that they want to develop self-esteem. It can be that they want to overcome an obstacle in their personal lives, which is something to do with themselves and not an outside influence. Or it could be that they want the treasure, that they want um, the thing that everybody else is after. Uh, it could be that they want freedom from something huge, like they want peace and they're in a wartime situation. So the whole want thing can be, can be vast. But whatever it is, they have to want it, we have to know that they want it, and we have to know what it is at the outset of the story. Um, and we'll look again at beginnings and, and how to start a story um, another time, but certainly somewhere in those early stages and early pages you're going to be saying this is what this character wants. Um, and it's without the thing they want there is no reason for the story. The story is about that character and that want. And then of course we have to stop them getting what they want, otherwise again be no story. I'm sure you've all heard that no drama, no conflict, no drama. Well this is where it comes from. The character wants something, you as a writer are now going to try and stop them getting it in as many imaginative ways as possible. Um, and again, this can be a very plot-driven scenario where they need to rescue somebody, for instance, maybe that's what they're doing, and every time they get near to rescuing them, something else stops them doing so. Something goes in their way, some person, some force, some problem, um, and it's your job to keep coming up with those ideas. Um, but it could be simpler than that. It could be that they want to um, get over their own inner demons. Perhaps they are frightened of going out of the house. And that want is quite a complex inner turmoil, and it's quite difficult to portray in, in a book, but you can do it. You're still going to have to show the steps. So they go forwards, they nearly get it, something stops them, they go back a step, they have to try another route, they go round. This is what stops it being one thing after another, which is not drama at all. So you have to think of what they want, then you have to think of why they can't have it, how you're going to stop them getting it in plausible ways as the story continues. Okay, so you've got what they want, you've got obstacles that you're going to throw in their path, and you, you really do have to make them suffer. You know, you might come to love your characters as, as sort of your babies, but you've got to be really mean to them, you've got to make them suffer and that suffering is what's going to evoke an emotional response in the reader. What you actually want, you don't just want your characters to suffer, you want your readers to suffer on behalf of those characters. So what you're hoping for is that when the character is in danger or is struggling, your reader is going to feel that sense of struggle precariously. And when they overcome an obstacle, obviously there's that sense of achievement and success and triumph. So you have what they want, you have the struggle. You've got to make your characters believable. Now, 
this is is really fairly sensible i mean they have to do what would be believable for that character to do so for instance we go back to dracula it's okay for dracula to behave in the way that an ancient murderous creature of the night would behave because that's applicable to him it's sensible for him it wouldn't be all right for me to behave like that it wouldn't be plausible but it'd be all right for him to behave like that in the book because that's the sort of character he is so for that plausibility they have to behave in character which brings me on to another point which is the characters have to be unusual and yet at the same time they have to be usual now that sounds a bit of a contradiction because it is basically writing the ordinary is very difficult to write an exciting story about an ordinary person you can put them in extraordinary circumstances and then their behavior has to overcome that that's one way of strengthening an ordinary character but it is much easier to write somebody who is slightly off the wall slightly more colourful, more flamboyant, has got something about them that makes them stand out. Even if they start off ordinary and develop that, you need that something um, to make it interesting. It's much harder to write ordinary people behaving extraordinarily, but in character. At the same time, you can't just think of a character and think, well, I want to make him extraordinary, so I'm going to give him um, incredible good looks and loads of money and he's going to be really witty and clever and lovely and to make him even more incredible I'm going to make him a, I don't know a talented martial arts person or something the more you pile on the things just to make them special the less it works so you have to choose things that make them a complete character a rounded character every character has their flaws every character has their vulnerabilities and you have to show those in order for them to be plausible characters and then if you've got your character acting plausibly however peculiar the situation you have a character that the reader can relate to even if I'm relating to a superhero <laughs> I'm not, not really superhero material but I can relate to them if they behave in a way that is plausible for that character in that situation um, so I want you to think about how you're behaving towards your characters next time you try and write them. Um, are you giving them a tough enough time? Have they got obstacles to overcome, overcome? And are they able to overcome those obstacles in a way that is in keeping with that character? Um, and next time you, you read something, have a look and see what sort of torture those poor characters are put through by their